Mike Tyson, one of the most popular and polarizing athletes of our time, now nearly 40 years after his professional debut, we're getting an intimate look at his life through the lens of a photographer, Lori Grinker. Crystal caught up with her to talk about her new book. It's called Mike Tyson. I think I can remember that. <laughs> That's a simple one. Well, Lori was so fascinating. She really went inside of Mike's camp, spent a very long time with him, really became his friend, and got to know him in a way that most of us never will. But lucky for us, she documented all of it. Take a look. Soft-spoken but tough, laid-back but powerful. Mike Tyson is one of the greatest boxing champs of all time, but despite his notoriety, he remains elusive to many. Photographer Lori Grinker isn't one of them. She met Mike when he was just 14. How would you categorize him as a teenager? He was sweet and he had tons of muscles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I got it. Sweet just right. and shy. Okay. And very polite. Mm -hmm and big. Her photo started out being part of a college project at Parsons School of Design. They wound up being iconic. Her new book, Mike Tyson, features never before seen photographs from the 1980s and 90s. They reveal an intimate side of Tyson when the enigmatic fighter was in his prime. Tyson kept saying, oh, he's gonna be the next champion, you should follow him. And that she did. She spent a lot of time in the Catskills at the home of Mike's trainer and mentor, Cus D'Amato. There was a lot of laughter. Mike was funny, Cus was funny. There was a lot of storytelling. Mike got used to me being around and we did things like he would let me photograph him when he was studying fight films. Mm. And up in the attic, they had a projector and Jim Jacobs would, you know, give him films all the time and he really liked to study. <laughs> Another thing Mike likes, pigeons. Back in 1990, our Fox 5 cameras captured Mike tending to his birds in Brooklyn. Lori's camera captured him with his pigeons upstate New York. His quiet time in sharp contrast to his fury in the ring. The one thing I learned about shooting boxing is that it's a lot of anticipation, but it's also luck where you are at the ring. This photo was taken during one of his early matches in Latham, New York. And he is very imposing, and the light was so dark, and there's kind of this glow around his head. And the fight lasted 30 seconds, and I just happened to be in the right spot, right where the knockout happened. Although the book is mainly photographs, it does contain a few of Mike's famous quotes like this one. Everyone has a plan till they get punched in the mouth. This pic reveals a happy Mike taken after he snagged his first heavyweight title in Las Vegas. He posed for me outside on the terrace. Okay. So you're seeing the darkness and some lights of Las Vegas behind him. Gotcha. On the way up in... Was he happy? Yeah. He, he had to have amazed. been thrilled. He was... But he still had that sweetness. Yeah. And it was like something unbelievable. Lori documented both legendary fights and troubling times. Cus died. Jim died. Don King came in. In People my opinion, Robin and Ruth did not have the best intentions, I'm sorry to say. Mm -hmm. All these people, I think, just wanted something out of him, and he fell into it, and he had his buttons pushed, and he just spiraled down. Through his ups and downs, Lori says Mike was always determined to win, in and out of the ring. When asked to sum him up in just three words, she chose... Smart, funny, impulsive. All right, well, there is a book launch tomorrow at Gleason's Gym, 130 Water Street. That's in Dumbo in Brooklyn from 5 to 7. Lori's going to be there. She'll be signing books. Very cool. And there is an art gallery called Clamp. It's on West 29th Street. They're going to blow up some of the photos and display them starting November 3rd right up until almost Christmas, December very 23rd. Cool. But I very like cool. Yeah. It, was, it was interesting to chat with her. And I have to give an extra shout out to Peter Frasini, who found some of that old footage from the 1990s. Wow. Steve Dunleavy and Bob O'Brien. Oh my Rest goodness. Rest in peace, our old Both colleagues. Of them, right. Yeah, oh. they were some storytellers. So yeah, it, it all came oh. together nicely. Though. And we got some stories about them too. <laughs> Boy, don't we. <laughs>